In Fallout 2, it's possible to get pretty much the best gear in the game as soon as you start. So while I'm using this boosted, gifted build for this video, the only actual requirements I would say are tagging big guns and energy weapons. While you will need strength for the carry weight when it comes to the armor especially, you can play around with what builds you like. I suggest trying this one and then trimming it down and customizing it to your playstyle. For the record, for a normal playthrough, I would usually avoid the gifted trait. The next step is completely cheesing the Temple of Trials. This can easily be done, just run through this bit if you want to. Obviously, you could take the time to do the temple properly, but this is about mad dashing to the gear. With my build, I was able to talk Cameron out of giving me the boss fight treatment. You should be able to as well, as you can save scum and try your luck, or simply just win the fight. Once outside, I like to talk to the Elder and get my combat training. Can't forget to steal Aunt Morales' gold either, that's a must. Now we can cross the bridge into the great outdoors. For this run, we are going to go about four squares to the right of Klamath. Again, making sure to stop and save every couple of squares. It takes one lousy world map encounter to set you back in a significant way if you don't save often. From here, we are going to head due south, past the Din and to the city of San Francisco. You will likely find some people in the wrong place at the wrong time, but that is none of our business at the moment. We just keep our sights on San Fran, save scumming like a madman the whole way. Once in the Golden Gate City, our first stop should be the Flying Dragon 8, run by Lao Chao. The two merchants we will be visiting in San Fran can be stolen from, meaning any money they have in their inventory can be pickpocketed. Not only does this mean you pretty much get any of their stock for free, but it also means that we have unlimited money as long as we have the patience to come back after restock. Something important to note is that Fallout 2 doesn't really have a time limit, at least not the one it pretends to have. So no matter how long you've been gone from Arroyo, they face the same fate as when the Gek is discovered, meaning you have all the time in the world to rest until healed or read any book you want or wait for any merchant to restock. So don't be afraid to use the rest feature. Acquiring a basic weapon and armor from these vendors is our top priority now. Still, if you want my advice for things to come, stock up on stim packs, super stim packs, 223 ammo, and microfusion cells. These will all come in handy as we go. Buying and reading skill books is another good practice as you will then raise the skill that they are associated with, giving you at least a little bit of an advantage when we're moving forward. After securing our fortune, we should finally head to the Brotherhood Outpost. We can accept a quest from them to get the vertebrate plants from the Enclave at Navarro. Make sure to save before entering dialogue here just in case you say something stupid and get locked out of the quest. Now comes the fun part. After receiving the Brotherhood's quest, the location of Navarro will appear on the world map. Now is the time for real deal save scumming. The closer we get to Navarro, the more Enclave patrols we will encounter, which is pretty much a death sentence. It can get pretty tricky, but you can make it to Navarro. Once there, we have to dispose of Chris to gain access to his shack. This can be really easy or stupid hard. Chris likes to run away and our combat level isn't the best at the moment. Once he is taken care of, we can head into Navarro proper. Running to the room in the far left, we can get the first bit of gear we are looking for, a set of advanced power armor. This is the second best armor in the game, the best being APA Mark II, found on the oil rig during the end game. Heading topside, we can talk to a few people and find out where the Verdi plans are. Then, using a bit of social manipulation, we can get the plans and also make sure to grab the K9 motivator and the electric lockpick for the next goals that we have. Back inside, we can recruit the K9 cyberdog after killing the scientists in the room with him. Make sure the door is closed so we don't aggro the whole of Navarro. Optionally, if you have spent time in your lockpicking skill, you can grab the key fob from the commander's office here. However, this probably isn't the best idea right now as if you're caught, the base goes on alert. Coming back when you are more prepared is just fine. With these goals complete, we can go back the way we came. Once on the world map, don't forget to save scum some more on our way back to San Francisco. The Enclave troopers can still do some damage and we don't have a way to fight back yet. Once back at San Fran, we can turn in the Verdi plans and access the Brotherhood of Steel Bunker. This will lead us to the first of the weapons we are after, the YK-42B Pulse Rifle. Now, we head to Klamath. Once there, we need to get the quest to rescue Smiley, and we need to grab Vic's radio. Then, heading to the Den, we can either pay Metzger for Vic, or just take out the whole Slaver's Guild. With Vic in our party, we can now go to the Toxic Caves. The geckos inside the radioactive hellhole should not be a problem at this point, but watch Vic around the goo. After rescuing Smiley, ask Vic to wait and bring the trapper back to the entrance. And once you return, you can have Vic fix the generator and use the electronic lockpick from Navarro on the elevator door. Inside, we will find a security bot. After the battle, we can loot the Bozar rifle. And just like that, we have the best gear in Fallout 2 with the whole game ahead of us. Enjoy being overpowered. Get fucked.